Romanticizing your life is tapping into an energy that is abundant. It's surreal and absurd, it's hopeful and charming, it's imaginative and silly, creative and inspiring. It's making choices from a place of love over fear. It's trusting instead of worrying. It's the feeling of truly being present for your life. You don't pay my, you don't pay my rent. Good morning, angels of the internet. Oh my goodness. I am on such a high right now because this morning I just released a new song it's called fuck the art world and I just I don't know if you feel like this if you're creative and you've been working on something for a while and you finally put it out in the universe and it's to connect with people it's just this most beautiful feeling especially because I wrote this song because I really want to inspire independent artists to think outside of traditional systems and it's a really cool like pop punk type song because I wanted to create something that you could simultaneously dance to but also scream to. So please go stream that before we get into anything else. My goal with this song is to get to 20k streams and once I do that I will release a really sick music video and I think that we can do that together. I feel like we have a really beautiful community that uplifts each other. Um, and before I forget, I also want to say that I am playing a show this Saturday. I have been spending the last month with my bassist working out a live show. It's going to be very theatrical. I'm going to dress up. I've also created like sort of, it's almost like a theater piece actually. So I'm super excited. If you wanna come celebrate the release of my new song with me, if you're in Paris, I would love to see you there. Get a drink after, hang out. It's gonna be a really good time. Um, so now that like that big thing has happened this morning, I wanna just have like a really chill out evening with myself and do something creative and really tap into like this feminine, creative energy, this fun energy. And one way that I've been doing that is by creating little rituals. And something that I've done recently is created these little wishing pots. Basically, on the last full moon, I <laughs> took some grains of rice and I used them as seeds for my dreams. And I took some, um, I want to say the French word, which is terre. I took some soil and I put it in different cups and I've labeled them like this one is like friendship, this one is opportunities, and I just talk to my little cups every day and I put water in them and um, today I'm going to decorate them a little bit with some glitter and stuff. Yeah, I thought that I would do this with you guys and also talk about romanticizing your life and the power of that because I think that rituals are very important and they have been for me around creating novelty in my life and one way that we can elevate the present moment is by creating novelty and I think that something that I've noticed in our society is people look at romanticizing your life as sort of like this delulu mindset and a way of making especially girls feel silly or frivolous um, we're taught that it's better to take things seriously and, you know, get to work, be serious. When in reality, I find that I get my best ideas and I feel most in a flow state when I'm being creative and having a lot of fun around just like doing little things like this. So yeah, that is what is on the agenda for this evening. And I would definitely encourage you guys to do something like this because even if you don't believe in you know, the power of positive thought. I think that it's sort of just symbolic to yourself that you are caring for your dreams. So I wanna talk all about that today, romanticizing your life and the power of that and how that has changed my life and how I think it can change yours. But before we get into the rest of the video, I do wanna to thank today's sponsor, which is BetterHelp. If you guys don't know, BetterHelp is an online therapy resource and 
What I love about it and why I've worked with them so many times now is because you can really do it from anywhere in the world, from the comfort of your own home. And I think a lot of times when we are seeking therapy, there can sometimes be shame around that. And you know, we all have our different schedules. So wherever you are in the world and whatever you're going through, you can log in and message your counselor through video or on the phone, there's somebody available to you. It's really simple. You take a short questionnaire and then they will match you with a licensed therapist that is perfect for you. It's a lot more affordable than traditional counseling and they also offer financial aid, which I think is amazing because I think that sometimes, you know, the money aspect can keep a lot of people from being able to get help. And just like in traditional therapy, all of the therapists on there are fully licensed and really good at what they do with a wide range of expertise. So you're sure to find somebody that you can really vibe with because that is extremely important as we all know. And they also make it super easy to change therapists if ever you feel like, mm, maybe this person isn't really the right choice for me. So if you would like to try online therapy, I would highly recommend it. I think it's always great to have the extra tool in your toolbox and they're actually offering 10% off your first month to everyone who is watching this, all the Purple Palace angels. All you have to do is go to betterhelp.com slash purple. That's betterhelp.com slash purple. So thank you so much to BetterHelp and let's get back into the video. All right, so back to romanticizing your life and back to decorating my little wish cups. Um, I'm actually using this glitter that I use a lot of times. Like I have some on my eyes and then I will put it in my hair. Um, and I just think it's so useful <laughs> and it's really pretty. And it's cool as well if you have dark hair because it really shows up pretty well. I have it in gold as well. Um, so yeah, I would definitely encourage you guys to do some sort of ritual like this. Um, you can either get real seeds or you can use rice grains and then you'll just say what each grain means, put it in the soil and then you know, you will water it and talk to it every day and pour love into it. I actually heard this study, I don't know if it's true or not, but I like to believe that it is, that if you talk to your plants, then they will live longer. I am notoriously like really bad at keeping my plants alive, I think because I do travel a lot. So I think a big lesson that I need to learn in life is taking care of things. And so this has been, you know, something that I've been trying to do every single day. Um, and yeah, like I said, some people might find this frivolous, but in my day-to-day -day life, this past, these past few weeks, and a lot of you guys have actually noticed like on my Instagram, they're like, wow, you're having so much fun lately. Like I'm always posting like really fun, silly things or just trying to amuse myself. And that I think is the key, I think, to romanticizing your life is amusing yourself first and being able to go with the flow and being very present. I think that a lot of times we think like romanticizing your life is like being like your heads or your head isn't, it's like feeling like your head is in the clouds or something. When in reality, it's a practice of self love, um, of saying that like I'm not gonna force things and I'm actually gonna take the time to have fun. Um, I was talking about this on my TikTok the other day. Go follow me on there if you haven't already because I post some really fun stuff. Um, I was cleaning my apartment and I had decided that morning, like I knew my apartment was a mess basically. And I was like, girl, you need to clean your apartment, but I didn't feel like it. I keep my apartment sort of in disarray. Like I feel more comfortable in a mess. Like I sort of romanticize like the messy artist vibe, but like there's a limit for everyone. You know what I mean? And so that morning I woke up and I was like, you really need to clean your apartment, but I, Instead, I wanted to try out like makeup looks. So I was like, you know what? Do your crazy makeup looks because for my live show, I'm gonna be doing like some, some crazy makeup looks and then clean your apartment and make it into like a fun thing. You know what I mean? It's all about like elevating the mundane. I had this similar experience uh, recently around my music release because I have been so busy recently. Um, basically, just preparing for this live show that I didn't have a lot of time to prepare visuals for the release, um, which is very important. I mean, if you guys aren't into music or anything like that, like visuals are part, part of like the most important part because it like gets people excited around your music. So it was literally two days before 
and I felt extremely overwhelmed. I was like, I need to film like a music video. I need to do something. But instead, I played the piano that morning. I got dressed up, <laughs> went to the park, and when I came home, I was over on this side of the room and like I liked my makeup that day so I was taking a selfie and then the angle was really cool and I was like maybe you can just tape your phone to your ceiling because my apartment is very like artistic anyway and the song is like fuck the art world and so I was like maybe you can tape your phone to the ceiling and like just like lip sync to the lyrics and create like this little fake art studio idea going on and um that's what I did and I had a really fucking fun time doing that and I posted the um, reel on Instagram and I did way better than like all of the other music videos that I spent months slaving over. And the lesson to me from that was I allowed myself to go with the flow and instead of, you know, fe you feeling like I need to do it this way, I stayed open and present and I just said, what sounds like fun? Because I often think, and this is why a lot of our side projects, in my opinion, end up working, is because those side projects are free of that energy that we put on things that we really care about. Um, our side projects are fun, they're light, they're feminine energy. Um, and that was how I felt around filming that few pieces of content. And of course, it ended up doing like way better. So it's been a testament to me that like, I think in life I've always thought growing up that in order to succeed, it has to be really hard, especially in creative realms. Like you have to be suffering, like art is suffering. Like we have this idea of the sad artist or like, but that's not how I want to live my life, you know? Like I want to feel like I'm amusing myself first. And so I wanted to talk about this today because it's been such a revelation for me of romanticizing wherever you are right now because there's so much pain and suffering in this world and the moments of highlights, the moments of wins are very few and far between to be honest. They're like once every few months, like if you have a big project and it's coming out and if you put all of your love and energy into the, just the release of something, whether that's art, whether that is, I don't know, it doesn't even have to be art, it could be anything, then you're gonna be disappointed and live your day to day up until that time not feeling so good. So what I've been doing lately is romanticizing even the bad days. For example, the other day I woke up and I felt sad and I cried and instead of feeling like bad about it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna romanticize my sadness. I lit some candles, I put on, because I have like a lot of like weird old clothes <laughs> because I'm very like theatrical. I always say you can take the girl out of the drama school but you can't take the drama out of the girl. Um, <laughs> and so I put on like this long wedding dress because I have like this wedding dress collection. And I just let myself cry and I put on like some old jazz music and I was like, this is actually nice. Like I'm leaning into the sadness and instead of feeling like a victim of my emotions, I'm saying like, I'm gonna use this to fuel my creativity, you know? And sometimes I'll sit at the piano and play a few things. So I think that that has been like the big energy shift for me is one, I'm using myself first no matter what. If I'm not having fun, how can I count on anyone else to enjoy what I'm doing? Because honestly, no matter what field you're in, people can feel that energy. If you've slaved over a painting and you didn't enjoy it, like, I don't know, I feel like you can feel that. Um, what, or even with like music or anything, like if I would have, you know, tried to put together like this music video that should have taken me weeks in a day and like didn't enjoy it, then you could have felt that, but instead I just taped my phone to my ceiling and like did with what I could in that time and I had a lot of fun doing it and then it ended up working, you know? So that's one, amuse yourself first. And then the second is romanticize every aspect of your life. You know, whether that is going to the supermarket, go to the supermarket, but put on big sunglasses and make it like a thing, you know what I mean? Or like. Even if, you know, 
you're having difficulty around money or anything like that being like you know what this is a phase in my life i actually i remember reading this book about um like manifestation and it was like whenever you get a bill in the mail take that bill and say thank you as if it was a check i did this once and <laughs> i need to start doing it again actually i did this and i remember like a few days later this was like 10 years ago a few days later i had done like this stage like this internship and it was year, like a year since i'd done the internship and then i got a check in the mail for that internship they're like oh we owed you money and i was like all right i guess you're owe me money and it's like whenever you trust that you are abundant that your dream life is floating to you and things are gonna work out because you're in that vibration then things end up working out that way because i think when you're in that state of frustration around your work or anything you're blocking any abundance to come to you but when you're in a light energy and a creative energy you make it easy for yourself to access all of the beautiful things in life because i think personally that the universe loves playful energy that is something that i always remind myself i say every day i say shayna you need to be having more fun like more fun more silliness um because not only like do you feel better but people react to that energy the last thing that i want to talk about with that before i just chat with you guys about life stuff is this thing called the sunk sunken cost fallacy is that what it's ca called where you get to a certain point with a project and you feel like you have to keep going just because you've invested a lot of time or money or whatever but i also think that something that i've been practicing is being open you know what i mean if something doesn't feel good redirect your energy into something that does and i think trying to stick with something that's no longer working whether that's a friendship whether that is a, a relationship whether that is a project is the easiest way to ruin your own life i think um i'm speaking from experience as someone who has been in has invested in relationships like really long-term relationships and feeling like well you know i've been in this for so long and you know we have so much history and you know what i mean like in every area of my life projects but I think that whenever something isn't working and you feel unhappy for more than three days in a row, um, you need to start asking yourself questions. And so that's, I just wanted to touch on that because I do feel like a lot of creatives, um, oh my God, my hair is stuck on my glitter. A lot of creatives struggle with that, you know, um, with feeling like they need to stick with something just because maybe they've been doing it for a few years. But I just want you to know that life is meant to be fun. Life is meant, and that is something as a Capricorn rising that I struggle with because I have a lot of fun areas of my chart. We're getting into astrology. Roman if I'm going to romanticize my life, you better ask that I'm into astrology. Of course I am. Um, I have a lot of Capricorn in my chart, which means like a lot, like seven placements. Venus and Capricorn, I think Mars or Mercury as well, like, and so that helps me get things done, but also, like, there's this idea of being a work horse, a work a workhorse, and having to climb the mountain alone, but I really think that when I look back at my life, like, five years ago, if I could give myself any advice, I would have been, like, just have more fun, like, you're gonna get to where you need to go, but isn't it so much better when you can have fun along the way, and the answer is yes. <laughs> And I got coffee with a friend the other day, and she's very spiritual as well and into romanticizing life. And I feel like more and more I'm surrounding myself with people like that who decenter men. I'm, I love this concept of decentering men, of like making men not like the center of our lives as females. Um, I can do a whole video about that. Um, but we were talking about we want to surround ourselves with people who are living in a space of miracles living in this space of anything is possible and whenever i see this friend we always like write in our journals and we end up doing like chants <laughs> and like it's really silly but i always leave feeling so uplifted and so i think that it's really important as well to Surround yourself with people who hold space for you in that sort of romantic, dreamy space that you're in because it's rare. 
it is rare and I think that it can be lonely in at the top and the reason why I say the top I don't mean like success I mean at the top of the frequency it's lonely at the top of the frequency and I think that you'll actually find yourself if you tap into this energy by creating rituals for your life, like by making everyday little things fun, whether that's your morning coffee, whether that's like, hey, today I'm going to take yourself on a date. You will find that people will want to be surrounded by you because you are like a light in their life. And that's a very beautiful place to be put in but also you need to make sure that you also have those people who shine the light on you as well and you're not just giving your energy all the time because it can be very draining i think when you are uplifting to other people and you're constantly being like and this is something i've experienced um constantly like i don't know i feel like especially in france there's a pessimism is sort of like the home base for most people um you know I don't want to generalize. I, there are some people who are like very like dreamy and that definitely exists, but I do think as a culturally, um, they will tell you all the reasons why things won't work before they do work. Almost I think as like a defense mechanism. And I think a lot of humans are like that because it's our way of like protecting ourselves. Um, but having said that, like, yeah, I have found myself in circumstances where around people who are like down on themselves and saying like, yeah, well, this might not work because of this, that, and that, and like, if that's a reality you want to live in, then that's fine, but I want to live, even if it's not necessarily, like, true, quote-unquote, I want to live in a reality that is elevated so that it can shift and become true, because you can't change your circumstances by staying in that same lack mindset, you know, like, feminine energy and romanticizing your life, for me, is making decisions from a place of love and not fear it's being open to going with the flow and saying you know what i have time for myself i have time my camera died of course <laughs> it's saying i have time for myself i have time to go to the park and i always think back to this time before i got into art school i was in this prep school and all the other kids at school you know their parents were paying for it because while my art school in France was free once I got in, it was a public school, in order to get accepted, I decided to go to like this prep school to like really help me prepare mon dossier. And if you're interested in that, I have a video all about like my dossier for art school. A dossier is basically like a portfolio. And if you think you can get into an art school in France without going to a prepa, it's really hard. Like I don't know anyone who has done that. So anyway. Um, I was at the school and since I was paying for it myself, I was like, I need to work every day, 100%, 24-7. I didn't go out, mostly because I was broke as fuck. Like, I couldn't even afford to go get a drink. I would literally, like, I, that was the skinniest I've ever been in my life. I think I weighed, it doesn't matter. But I was, like, so skinny because I was literally eating, like, one croissant for lunch. I could not afford to eat. Um, I... I would just like drink coffee all day and try to get through the day because I was like, I'm gonna make this work. Um, but having said that, like at the end of the year, all of my peers who were like partying all the time, they were getting into these art schools and I, like my top one I didn't get into. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like I worked so hard. I put my head down and I, and I did all this work. Why didn't I get into that school? And actually, looking back now, I think it probably was because I wasn't, I, I was so focused on success that I didn't allow myself to have that flow. And I think while the other kids were partying, they probably went to the interview a lot more like zen, where I was like, I need this to work. And of course, at the interview, my computer broke down. Like, all these things happened because I was in this place of like, I need this to work. You know, and whenever you need something, forget it. You know what I'm saying? And so that is another lesson around romanticizing your life is like telling yourself around your creative projects, like I'm someone where I'm gonna keep creating no matter what. You know, obviously you want people to enjoy the things that you do and listen to your stuff and like your paintings and this and that, but you always know that there's gonna be a next one. 
you know, and maybe this won't work, but the next one will, you know, and keeping that mindset um, and creating because you want to be felt and not to be seen. I saw, there's this creator that I love. If you guys don't follow him, you absolutely have to. He's life changing. His name is Heinz, H-I-N-D-Z. He made a video the other day about um, how TikTok is like a casino because even like the movement of it, it's like, especially if you're a creator on there, you think that every video that you post, it's like you hope that it's gonna, you're gonna hit the jackpot. And so sometimes you will and sometimes you won't. And people are searching in any way that they can just to be seen. But that I think is not the long game to play. I think the long game to play is to create real community and to try to be felt instead. Like even around YouTube, like if I was creating from a place of like wanting views, I would have quit already because it's so up and down. But what I am creating for now in this space is hoping to connect with people who can really benefit from the things that I'm talking about. And I know that in the long run, no matter what, I'm gonna be taken care of because I know that I am connected to that joyful, playful energy. And, you know, I have recently, like on my Patreon page, I don't talk about it enough. I know I, I really should because it's such a beautiful place, a beautiful community. I have these creative small groups and we have like our own little private Instagram page and I'm putting people in small groups and it's because I want to really create a community that is uplifting and like goes deeper than just like, oh, did this thumbnail like get people to click? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I, that was all just like a lot that came out. Um, I had some notes, but I didn't even look at them because I think it just was like, I like just kind of going in the flow as well. So those are some of the ideas that I have had lately and have made my life so much more enjoyable. Like <laughs> the other day it was raining outside and I just put on some sunglasses and sat on my piano and I sang Dolce Vita because I was like, I wanna feel <laughs> like I'm at the beach. And I had fun doing that and I think people enjoyed watching it. And again, it's another example of amusing yourself first. So ask yourself in your life, how can I amuse myself first? Am I amusing myself first? And if the answer is no, how can you change that? How can you be having more fun? Because it's about you first and your process and how you feel. Whatever comes next, you want people to connect with you when you're on that plane of energy. You know what I'm saying? If they're connecting with you when you're on the plane of energy of lack, then it's not good. It's like the same thing around gossip. Like you think growing up when you're in like middle school that you're creating meaningful connection, connections with people when you're gossiping, but actually those are really low vibration connections. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here because I feel like it was a lot. I got to decorate these a little bit. Um, I'm kind of bad at multitasking actually. <laughs> That's why I don't really do the paint with me videos anymore because I don't paint. I just like dry out all my brushes like talking to you guys. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, if you did, you can subscribe for videos. Not every Tuesday, but you know, like most Tuesdays. You can also check out my Patreon if you wanna support what I'm doing. Um, I do Zoom parties on there. Like I said, we have the creative small groups. I, I'm really trying this year to pour more into that community because I think that playing to the algorithms and playing to the platform is, isn't the long game. And I also think that that's something to keep in mind if you're also a creator um, to prioritize community over clicks. Community over clicks. <laughs> okay. Well, I love you guys so much. Please go stream my song so we can get to 20K streams. And I hope to see some of you guys at my show on Saturday. So anyway, hope you have a beautiful week and I will see you next time at the Purple Palace. Bye.